Hello the Darkness 344 here, in this video I built the Chrome Dino game with the new copper bulbs. Today I'll be showing how it works and I'll also give a demonstration. As always a world download will be included in the description below, however being in the Java snapshot this world download is only for Java players, so sorry my regular fans. Also just a quick disclaimer, since I'm playing on snapshot 23w45a, the behaviour of the copper bulb may of course change a bit in the final implementation. Though to be perfectly honest I'm pretty sure it'll be fairly similar and this uh, game will probably still work. First I'm going to give a brief overview of actually how it works. So first of all to start the game you just go up and press this button over here and the lamp will stay on indicating the game started. Over here there's also a scoreboard which goes up to 5, but um, the game will continue anyway after I didn't really implement any sort of like win condition. Also like the original game you have the obstacles. Um, in the original game there's like cactuses, uh, I've done like weird lump bush things, so uh, it, it was just easier to do it like this. But yeah, there's still obstacles in the game because that's kind of needed. I didn't implement any flying ones, so in the original game they have like um, pterodactyls I think, um, but I didn't implement them. However, the game is actually designed so you can just add them all. Now I'm gonna go demonstrate how it works, but before that, if you're liking the video so far, don't forget to subscribe or give the video a like as it really helps out the channel. Now let's actually go see how it works. The game's comprised of several different parts. Over here, I have the input section, which I've just used the tripwire hook. So as we can see, it just makes the dinosaur jump. Then we have the actual screen itself, um, which displays the objects as well as the dinosaur. Then we have a scoreboard up here as well as um, all the game logic up here. And we also have the object spawner as well as the hitbox detection. So I'm going to go over um, in detail, I guess, on each of these individual um, subsystems and show how I've actually implemented them so you can create your own maybe. First, I'm going to talk about how I've actually done the jumping section. So we have our dinosaur and when we activate this, um, if I can activate it properly, the dinosaur will jump like this. And the way this is done is we just have a tripwire hook. I've tried using um, skulk sensors. Um, I guess you could also use pressure plates, but I just preferred using a tripwire hook. Um, it was it's, it's faster than using um, a skulk sensor. And what this does is activate the node block as well as send a redstone signal down into this um, over here, which just takes that input, puts it into a pulse extender, so I think this is for um, 16 redstone ticks, and this goes into our um, dinosaur jump section, which I've got a, basically a miniature demonstration over here, so it's a bit easier to follow. So this is where one of the features of the copper blocks uh, comes in very useful, because the copper block acts as a T flip flop, um, we can make our dinosaur jump by using that feature. So over here um, is an observer chain. And what we have are observers facing into the observer chain, um, which will activate when the observer chain is activated. So down here, we just have redstone dust activating the observers. And if we just turn the redstone dust on, so if we change the state of the redstone dust, the observers will detect this um, and send one pulse um, up the chain, which these observers will detect and also send one pulse to the copper bulb. So if the copper bulb is currently off, it'll turn on, and if the copper bulb is currently on, it'll turn off. Um, so that means we can draw shapes, uh, like this small dinosaur thing over here, and we can make it jump like this. So the way I've done the shape is behind each of these bulbs, we have an observer, and when we want to draw a shape, we just activate the bulbs um, for the specific shape, and then these ones over here have observers, but they're just not activated at all. So these ones are just off. And what this means is we can create um, a jumping animation like this. So if we want, we can keep the dinosaur um, in the air for as long as we want, or we could have it go down low like this. And this is just done on a slightly bigger scale uh, like this. So if I decided to use a lever instead, as you can see, it'll stay up there for as long as the lever's on. And then when the lever turns off, the dinosaur will come back down. So that's the only problem with the larger shapes, is the animation isn't as nice as the smaller ones. So something like this actually does kind of look like it's jumping, whereas something like this big, um, the jumping effect isn't as good. And as you can see, it kind of fades away like that. But I'm sure there are ways to get around that. And um, as long as you keep it fairly small, like this one over here, it shouldn't affect it too much. 
Now the way these objects are spawned, um, they, they kind of shaped like that. Um, and the way we spawn them is by this down here. So there are two places where we can spawn objects. Down at the bottom, down here. Or up here, where um, on the actual Chrome Dino game, sometimes you have like um, birds flying over and stuff, or pterodactyls. Um, but I decided to leave that out. So if you want to have that, you can implement that. But for now, there's only just this system down here. The way this works is based on the screen. So the way I've done the screen um, is I've used just copper bulbs on the front, of course. And then we have an, another observer chain like we had over there. But this time it's going horizontally. And then in each of those observers, we have another observer facing it. So what happens is when the observer chain um, is activated, all the observers uh, facing into it get activated and we'll turn on the copper bulb. And this allows us to send in pulses um, of custom time, I guess. And this means we can have objects like the missile that went into the poor dino. So this down here basically just spawns those rock things, I guess. And the way it does this is it uses these random number generators. So over here, we have this redstone clock. Um, and every so often, it will go into this random number generator, which will either generate a 1 or a 0. And the way it does this is based on um, the randomness of the dropper and signal strength of a stackable and a non-stackable item. This goes into these droppers over here. Um, and these will all produce a random number uh, between 0 and 1 as well. And which means you have around 7 combinations of rock shapes out front. And each of these will go into one of these lines. And each of these lines um, basically is a different combination of rock, as you can see. So if you want to implement the same thing for, um, say, a bird maybe, you could copy this circuit up here to the top. Um, where I've done this bit over here. And the reason for this is because I've also um, got the hitbox detection for the upper bit. Um, I just decided to leave the objects pointing out because I didn't want to figure out how to make a good looking bird. And I'm sure you'll be able to make um, much better cactuses um, rather than my feeble attempt at a cactus. Um, more, more like a rock than a cactus. So the object spawning also leads onto this system over here which is the collision detection system. The way this works is actually quite simple, but it's fairly clever. So over here, we have our dinosaur, and what we're trying to do is detect whether one of those objects that were spawned hits the dinosaur. The way we can do this is, well, we can check one of these pixels to see if it's on. The problem about that is, well, on this side over here, we can't put any inputs because of these observers blocking them. And on this side over here, um, we can't put any um, inputs like this because the user would see them and it wouldn't look that good. This can be solved quite simply by just mirroring the image that's shown onto the other side. So all we're going to do is replicate this dinosaur on this side over here and but instead of doing the whole dinosaur um, I've only done one block of the dinosaur which means I'm only detecting collision for one block of the dinosaur and the reason I'm doing this is because um, I don't really care about any of the other blocks, I'm just checking if to see if the object even hit the dinosaur at all. And the block I'm doing is probably the leg over here, and when it's up in the air, I think it's the arm, I'm not too sure. We've basically mirrored that pixel from the leg over, so we're taking this leg pixel over here, and we place it over here as well, so we have the same pixel over here, and that's the same thing for the arm up here. And what happens is, if the leg pixel down here is a 1, the pixel on the other side will also be a 1, but if it's a 0, the pixel on this side will also be a 0. And of course the one up here will be a 1, because the dinosaur is jumping. So this uses the exact same system as the dinosaur jump system, um, just allowing us to take an output from it, like this and this. Then with this output, we can and it together with the um, output from the object. So of course all these observer lines will contain the object, and when they get to the end, we can take it around this side. And if an object is spawned, it will activate this piece of redstone dust, which goes into the end gate as well. Now, if there's an object, it will turn off this redstone torch. And if the dinosaur's down here, this redstone torch will also turn off, which means together they are anded and will activate this redstone torch up here, which goes into an OR gate. Um, and this is all together with the exact same mechanism um, just for the top bit and this signal just travels up to the game over here and turns it off 
Now the last section of the video will go over the scoring system as well as a bit of the game logic, how different things are handled and I guess the best place to start will be pressing this button right over here. When the button is pressed it will activate this latch over here. So this is basically a set reset latch so you can set it and it will stay as a 1, it will output a 1 and you can reset it over here and this comes from the lose condition so if the object hits the dinosaur um, like that it'll generate a lose signal which will um, reset the latch to zero. The signal from the latch goes to several different places. The first place it goes is this tune over here which just indicates the game is on. Um, it also goes to the different mechanisms, the cloud generation over here, the flood generation over here, and the object spawner over here. And these are all just based on redstone clocks. The other thing the SR latch will do is it'll output a signal to the scoreboard up here to allow for scoring. So when this line over here is high, the scoreboard will actually be able to um, increment, but when this line is low, um, the scoreboard will only be able to clear itself. That signal also gets anded with several other signals, and that basically just prevents um, any extra points from being added or any uh, tunes being played. Um, while the game is ended. So if the game ends, but there's still an object on the screen coming down um, These AND gates just prevent the object from actually making a sound. Now when the dinosaur is hit by an object um, this line activates and As we saw earlier, it will reset the SR latch But the other thing it'll do is it'll go into this system over here which clears the scoreboard. And the way it does this is first by disabling the signal over here, which of course is turned off when the SR latch is off. And then it unlocks all these repeaters over here and the signal flows through. And that basically just fills the lamps with zeros. The only thing to note here is um, if the scoreboard reaches five, it will play um, a short tune, but um, when resetting it doesn't play that tune. And the reason is it has an AND gate with the state of the SR latch. So if the SR latch is zero, meaning you've lost the game, and then it resets the scoreboard, of course, it's not going to play a tune because it's being anded with the state of the SR latch. But yeah, that's basically this scoreboard system. Um, it goes up to five, and it'll play a funny tune once you reach five, but it doesn't exactly do much more than that. Um, on your system, you can always um, take the output from this part over here and make it maybe ramp up the difficulty. You could have like a variable clock, so spawn objects at different speeds and just stuff like that to make it a bit more, just to add a bit more complexity. That's basically it. If you like this style of content, please comment maybe um, with a few suggestions that I could add to like videos like this. Um, this game can definitely be expanded on, so feel free to use it. Just, I guess, mention my channel in any videos you do of it, so just credit in the description maybe. Otherwise, I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe and I'm out.